Now? What about now? Oh, thumbs up! No, wait. Hmm. Hooray, right, sorted. They said yes. 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 Sorted. Yes. Okay. You good? Something's been happening with our microphone lately. When I was doing the robot chicken panel at Comic Con, our mic wasn't working either. So, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, hi! Yay, I'm so glad that you guys are here. <laughs> okay, start over again. So I was just explaining that Vargas has been sick. He's, um, we have no idea what's wrong with him. He went to the emergency room on Saturday because he wasn't, um, he was yelping when we would like pick him up and it was really strange. Um, so um, they did x-rays and nothing's wrong with him internally. His blood work seemed fine, nothing wrong on the x-rays, um, but he still can't walk very well. So um, we are waiting a week to see if he gets better and then we will maybe do some neurological tests or something. So um, we don't know. I think maybe he just pulled a muscle. So we're sort of waiting to see, but he's hanging in there. He just doesn't, he's not very happy right now. Thanks, bud. Thanks, buddy. Um, so, hi. <laughs> Maybe you should call an IT person to fix your microphones. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it yeah. just happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, someone just said arthritis. Like, not really. I mean, he's an eight-year-old chihuahua, so, you know, that's not really old for a chihuahua. Um, you know, he could have twisted a knee or strained a muscle, but like we left for dinner and he was fine and then we came back and he wasn't. So anyway, um, and then we had Happy that we had to take to the emergency room as well the other day and Happy woke up in the morning and was like screaming bloody murder. Like literally you guys, I've never heard a dog scream so much and he like woke me out of a dead sleep on um, yesterday morning and we like rushed him to the emergency room and um, you know $600 later he was fine literally he's fine and so they they uh, it was like the most expensive daycare ever um, which is why I was asking everyone about doggy insurance yesterday um, all right I'm gonna put the dogs down because they're totally distracting me um, but they think I was talking to the vet this morning and she thinks that um, Happy's foot all like fell asleep. And I didn't realize that like a dog's foot could fall asleep, but I started thinking about the first time when I was a kid, you know, when you're a little kid and you wake your parents up in the middle of the night because your arm is like dead. Um, that's like really freaky. So like, I think maybe that's what happened to him, oddly enough. Um, and she was like, you know, there's just some things with dogs we'll just never know, right? Um, so thought that was really interesting. And then, you know, ironically, the 14 year old pug, um, is like a tank and she's like the healthiest out of all of them. And she's like, she like, you know, she's like a, a literally like an army tank. <laughs> um, yeah, everyone's like $600 for the vet to tell you that your dog's foot fell asleep. Yep. But that's not the vet's fault, to be honest. When you take a dog in and they're screaming, um, they're gonna do everything that they can to figure out what's going on. You know, they they sedate them a little bit to do x-rays because your first thought, especially when they touch it and, you know, they don't want you to touch it, the first, um, your first thought is that, oh my God, it's like broken or something. Like maybe he jumped out of bed. I honestly thought like maybe I rolled over on him, which I have never done ever in all my years of having dogs. But like it could happen, I guess. Like if his little wrist was underneath me, I, I honestly didn't know. But so health insurance. So many people reached out to me about health insurance about the dog just to get this out of the way. And then I'll start answering questions. Um, and the jury's still out. 50% of people sort of think what I think, which is that I had health insurance on my pet for 15 years and they never covered anything. I w and I was with like, a really great one. Everybody kept saying, um, with meatball, someone said, yeah, meatball. Um, um, I was with like 
True Panion, which was an amazing, I think I was with True Panion. I probably shouldn't say this because just in case, I think it was, but um, they really didn't cover anything. They always said it was it um, pre-existing, which is what so many of you guys said as well, that they, they say it's, they find a way to say it's a pre-existing condition um, and then they don't have to pay. So I don't know, the, the most people said to start a bank account that I put funds into just for dogs. So I think I might do that because health insurance for a $200 deductible for two dogs was like $400 a month. That's crazy. That's like insane. Anyway, all right, here we go. Questions, we got the dogs out of the way. <laughs> so um, there's, when there's three dogs, there's a lot to catch up on. So um, uh, let's just start with some questions. Um, Margie from Alcor says hi. She's oh, Margie staff. from Alcor says hi. Hi, Margie. How are you? Um, I um, Someone just said check for a snake bite. If it's, um, you know, honestly, I started to think that maybe there was something that the dogs could have gotten into. Um, but their symptoms were completely different and so far, like granted they were only a couple days apart, but they were very, very different symptoms and the vet said that, that neither one of them had any blood work that would show that there was something wrong with them. So, um, yeah, so that was that. And not a tick. That was the other thing. I asked if it could be a tick potentially and so that's, um, they said that they would go deeper into what could be wrong with Vargas if in like the next four days he doesn't bounce back. So um, take some Battlestar Galactica money and buy a veterinary clinic. I think you guys think actors get paid a lot more than we do. Only some actors. <laughs> take some Battlestar Galactica money. Um, Battlestar Galactica was on 15 years ago and Sci-Fi Universal didn't pay us anything. Um, in fact, it, it was kind of criminal what they did pay us, to be honest. Um, that money's gone, long gone. <laughs> um, it's one of the things we actually joke about all the time. We don't joke about, um, because obviously actors do get paid very well. But um, I think that people don't realize um, how much we pay right off the top to the people that work for us. So. Um, the government takes such a large amount of money and then, you know, off the top we pay agents and managers and lawyers and business managers and publicists and um, all of these people take so much of that money that um, it's not uncommon for actors to take home a fifth of their paycheck, um, which is pretty common. So um, that's how you see actors sort of lose houses a lot, like if they haven't worked for three or four years, um, it's because it's you know the money goes very quickly um and you get used to it and then we waste a lot of money um do you at least get residuals here's the interesting thing that happened with residuals guys we don't get residuals on streaming services <laughs> so now that battlestar galactica which they also had a buyout um it's very strange um sci-fi universal had a five-year buyout so they could air it as much as they wanted for five years and then we started making money after that and um, then after five years, they just didn't air it anymore. So we did make residuals, but now that, that Battlestar is going over to Peacock, that's going to be streaming, which means we no longer get residuals for that. So actors don't, um, actors don't make residuals. No residuals for Longmire. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very interesting thing because it, everything's going to streaming and that's why the Screen Actors Guild sometimes is working tirelessly to constantly change, um, to change the contracts, but um, my union is not my favorite thing in the world and I don't get me started. <laughs> One Screen Actors Guild. <laughs> um, no, uh, someone said no royalties on Netflix or Amazon. Nope, nope, no residuals whatsoever. So actors really don't um, get residuals at all anymore. Um, yeah, in fact, the crazy thing was that when Longmire, we got residuals when we were on A&E, but then when Netflix bought it, we stopped getting residuals even though our contracts were with a our contracts were technically with Warner Brothers so Warners could do whatever they wanted with it so um, yeah so it's just it's one of those weird things it's just you know um, that's why you see actors sort of trying to diversify and control stuff so much more and write their own stuff and produce their own stuff because you know um, 
it's it really is sort of just trying to to generate more income because it's changed so much with streaming services yeah so sorry guys long-winded um <laughs> sorry um robin said um figured out if I want to store my brain in a freezer for a hundred years yet. <laughs> my last video kind of opened my mind to cryoscience. Maybe I'll live forever. Um, so I still haven't figured it out. You know, it's, it's one of those things we mentioned some of the uh, questions and concerns that I had, but they're more of the concerns of, you know, um, uh, do you believe that you have a soul? Do you believe that that soul goes someplace? Um, do you believe in a higher power? Do you, you know, all of these questions. Um, but, you know, I do recognize the one thing that Max said, if you don't believe in a higher power, so if you do believe that that when, when we pass away, we're just gone, which um, um, a large percentage of people do think that. So if that is something that you do think, then you have three options. You know, you're it's being buried, being cremated, or being cryopreserved. And you know, um, cryopreservation. If you don't believe in God or an afterlife or reincarnation, cryopreservation is the only one of those those sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for techniques. No. Yeah techniques we'll call it technique <laughs> sure. um <laughs> techniques that actually have a potential to have a, an extension of life um the other ones are pretty you know final um and so i don't know i, I i'm not against it um mm -hmm. i kind of you know i'm really not against it but we also still had a lot of questions about you know what happens if you're memories are gone and it's not you anymore and so it, it just all of those you know other questions legal questions around whether you have an identity when you come back and yeah and that's still in the works that was one of the questions we had as well was just sort of like you know um if uh if your social security number is attached to a body and a person and then that person is legally declared dead when you come back you don't technically have any you know existence no rights identity no being. rights really so i don't know there's a lot of things but i'm not against it i actually think it's kind of interesting and cool and um um the technology was so interesting and what i loved about max was the way that he explained it to somebody who didn't excel in science <laughs> so like i actually really understood a lot of the things that he was saying um and i really loved that i loved everyone at alcor they were so um um engaging and thoughtful and and you know um patient with the questions that we had but also at the same time they acknowledged that the science does not exist for this to work right now but that's not the goal the goal is that the science exists to 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 preserve you so that when the science does exist you're preserved so uh, you know yeah we had a lot of people talking about cult like behavior and stuff like that but we never got any vibe of that whatsoever yeah. and they were very clear about saying there's no guarantees this isn't a promise you know i didn't feel it was cultish at all if anything's more cultish it's like when i start meditating <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <and> we're <laughs> there's a lot of things in the world that are more occultish um <laughs> don't get me started um but um would you be afraid of being considered a relic when you come back um not really i mean i think it'd be kind of cool for someone to be like and this is katie she's 376 years old she looks like she's 20. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I think that's also one of the things that's so interesting about it is that the, the sense of adventure, like, you know, um, what's the worst that could happen? Like, you technically are already dead. You know. Um, someone just asked, what are my thoughts on the Lost to reboot? I didn't know they were rebooting Lost. Um, I don't know. I didn't really watch it the first time around. So <laughs> I watched it a little. I mean, kind of. Um, it was hard. Lost was on when we were filming Battlestar. We didn't have time to watch television because we worked so many crazy, um, so many crazy hours. Um, so I didn't really watch Lost actually. Um, 
or anything. The only thing I remember watching during Battlestar Galactica was that I binged Alias from like front to back as quickly as possible. Um, and then other than that, most of my time was spent memorizing and driving to and from work because we worked crazy hours. Um, Someone just said, after waking up from the freeze, maybe you'll get your residuals. <laughs> maybe they'll have it figured out. <laughs> Someone's like, you could become a historian when you come back, an expert in something. It'd be nice to be an expert in anything, because at this point, I don't know, I don't think I'm an expert in anything. I think I'm sort of like mediocre in a lot of things. <laughs> I diversified <laughs> my mediocrity. <laughs> um... Uh, someone just said, if I had a chance to do Doctor Who in the UK, knowing my love for sci-fi, would you do it? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I love Doctor Who. I think it's ridiculous fun. Um, I love I love it. It's so much fun. The closest I've ever come to Doctor Who is Samuel Anderson, who was on Doctor Who and is on Another Life. So I'm sort of living vicariously with him. Um... <laughs> Um, oh, someone just said, isn't there a BSG reboot? Yeah, so there is a Battlestar Galactica reboot. Um, as far as I know, none of the cast from our show, for, from our um, uh, edition are on the show. Um, but you never know. I have no idea. I wish them the best of luck. I, you know, everyone asks me all the time if I'm like upset about a Battlestar Galactica reboot. And it's absolutely not. You know, there's a part of me as a consumer of television, right, that wishes desperately for um, and hopes that we would have sort of new, fresh content that's not being recycled over and over and over again. Um, so on one hand, I wish that they could come up with like just a different sci-fi show. Um, but on the other hand, Battlestar Galactica at its core is so ripe for different stories from, from so many different points of view. And if they could do a great job with it, absolutely go for it. You know, um, I think it would be different if I hadn't worked consistently since Battlestar Galactica. But because I have, I have no problem looking back at Starbuck and at Battlestar just incredibly fondly um, and with nothing but just, you know, so much love and respect for everyone involved and that I got the opportunity in the first place um, that, you know, I, it, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, I know that I can sit here and I can bitch about residuals and all the things that actors go through, but at the end of the day, I'm so blessed and lucky enough to live my dream and um, I probably would actually pay people to let me be an actor. I'd live out of my car to, to be an actor um, because I absolutely love my job. So, you know, I can sit here and I can gripe about it till the cows come home, but I'm so lucky that Universal and Sci-Fi hired me to play Starbuck um, that, you know, I don't I don't wish any anything against anyone. I, I would love for them to continue with that. So, um... Do I play Amunet Black again in The Flash? I hope so. Um, I love Amunet so much, and um, I really, really hope that she gets a chance to come back again. Um, she is really, really, really one of my favorite roles that I've ever played. Um, I love how crazy she is. I love how she um, really just does whatever she wants to do and that you you honestly she's not cons she's consistent in her inconsistencies which is sort of what I love about her is that she's just very random um and I think it's really fun so I hope that she comes back um will I be in the new Riddick movie probably not I haven't heard anything about that but the last time I spoke to David Tui he said that they're going to the necroverse and that doll wouldn't be there so i'm a big fan of the riddick series though so i would love to watch it and see what they do um, <laughs> um so sorry i'm just reading things um I never talk about my Riddick role. I do. Um, so here's the thing. This is actually one of the things that Robin told me, but we got I got so distracted in the very beginning because there was no sound. Um, one of the things that um, I wanted to address, because everyone's always like, you didn't pick my question. You didn't pick my question. Um, so 
part of the reason sometimes I look at the questions is that if, if it's a question that I've answered n a number of times and that you can find the answer to it all over the place, um, I sort of don't answer those questions because if you go down in the YouTube channel, there are interviews from back to 2007 um, and there are tons of, there's content during Battlestar Galactica where I answered so many questions um, and there's there's just, so um, someone I think asked me my favorite movie like 15 times last <laughs> time and I didn't answer because I don't have a favorite movie. Um, I, yeah, I actually did answer it because I said High Noon, which is one of my favorites. So, um, there you go. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, would you consider gaming voice acting like Claudia Black? Um, so I have actually voiced many games already. I think that's what you're talking about. So um, there, I think I've done four video games, Call of Duty. Um, I did Halo. I've done... I think I've done a lot. I don't, yeah, there's a few of them in there. <laughs> so, um, uh, I just don't remember them right now, but I've definitely done them, I promise. Um, so, someone asked me if I was going to do a project with Trisha Halfer at any time soon, um, or again. And so, Trisha and I um, are dying to do another job together. We're just constantly looking for the right thing. I don't think that Trisha and I will ever be on camera and something fiction. I guess I can't say it will never happen, but I don't know if she and I would actually be on camera again together. However, um, she and I have been really trying to figure out um, some sort of a podcast or like um, having her on like a series of the YouTube channel. Um, and we're really just toying with different ideas. Um, and we really want it to be centered around motorcycles. So we're really just sort of playing with that idea right now. So if you guys have any ideas, just put them down there. You'll figure it out. <laughs> Do a motorcycle journey. Exactly. That's exactly the thing that, that everyone keeps saying, that Trisha and I on motorcycles, exactly. Um, and Trish and I should do a cross-country road trip. So we did actually do a trip in 2010 called the La La Ride um, from Los Angeles to Louisiana. And we did it to raise awareness um, during the, go the Gulf oil spill. It was a year later and people still weren't talking about it and there was still a lot going on. So we um, rode from Los Angeles to Louisiana by ourselves and um, raised quite a bit of money um, for the Gulf Restoration Network. And um, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, what we've learned from that experience though is that most people don't wanna see you riding a motorcycle. They wanna see all the stuff that happens in between the riding. Um, and so we just need to figure out um, we need to figure out what the, the the actual theme of the show is. You know, if motorcycles are our mode of transportation, what's the what's the point? Quite honestly, like, what's the point? Like, you know, we need to um, we need to actually find a story that people want to participate in um, and figure that out. So that's what we're trying to figure out right now, because um, we can't just wear bikinis and like get vitamin shots the entire time. <laughs> like, I what? think that, why, why not? not? I don't know. <laughs> Those are the best thumbnails. <laughs> I know you you have to like, you know, we we would be remiss to not acknowledge the fact that the episodes where Trish and I are in bikinis do a lot much a lot better in the <laughs> sick YouTube people. You sickos. <laughs> Oh god, that's funny. <laughs> um someone just said that I should do super cross. You guys, that scares the crap out of me. I mean, yes, I have every desire to ride on dirt. Um it's one of the things that I love. Um however, um I don't know. Like I'm sort of starting to get to a point that when my body starts to hurt now, it doesn't recuperate as quickly. And so I'm a little like you know, I don't want to get hurt, but Max is on. next question. Max just said, 
So Max Morgais, who um, CEO, is yeah. the CEO of Alcor, who you guys met if you watched that episode, just wanted to ask if you thought more about that having cryo um, arrangements does not require you to avoid risk. You can live exactly as you did before. You're more likely to die of a disease, which is interesting. It's one of the things that I questioned um, um, about Max before is that like he had said, you know, um, maybe he wouldn't, you know, uh, go hiking in the middle of nowhere um, because of cryopreservation, needing to, in the event of, um, you know, death, you need to be able to get the body cryopreserved as quickly as possible, or the brain at least. Um, and so that was something that I was so interested in is that, you know, I always thought that if you had this, you know, live forever mentality that you would start taking these crazy risks and do all this stuff. But, you know, um, Max had said in the video that he, he it, it's kind of the opposite. Like maybe he wouldn't go hike in the middle of nowhere just because of that. But what he's saying is that, um, you know, I think what he's saying is that statistically you're more likely to die from a disease, I guess, um, um, which is interesting, you know? I mean, it, it it is, I guess, the truth if I sit here and think of um, the people whom I've lost in my life, it is quite, quite, I would say 80% of the time it is from some sort of an illness or disease mm -hmm. or old age. Um, I think if you're going to do it, you have to do it from a place not fearing death, but just mm -hmm. looking for potentially adventure. If you do it because you're scared of death, then you probably will stop living life to the fullest, thinking you have a backup plan. True. Very true. Um, I, I loved the episode, you know, just purely from um, a scientific standpoint and an adventure standpoint. I, I loved meeting Max. I loved Alcor. I thought that um, um, I, I really do have that sort of adventurous spirit. I don't know if you guys do or not of that. Um, why not? Sort of like, why not? I mean, that's sort of my thought. Like, you know, um, I know that a lot of people had, uh, you know, um, uh, religious opinions about it, um, and people talked about, you know, uh, going to heaven and an afterlife and things like that. Um, and so, if that's your belief, then by all means, cryopreservation, uh, you know, technically wouldn't be for you. I guess is what they were saying to me. But uh, yeah. you know, but at the same time, you know, I don't know. No. Why not? We do, we talked about how that idea, the soul, if you go to an afterlife do you just get pulled back into your body a thousand years later? <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember that movie? Was that a movie with Robert Downey Jr.? It was. You guys. It was a movie with Robert Downey Jr. when he dies and goes to heaven and then doesn't he like quite literally go like Aah! and they like pull him back into a body and he comes back in the body of like a really young like handsome Robert Downey Jr. sort of like in his drug phase. So he was like, you know, <laughs> oh god um but i do think was it called heaven can wait you guys if i pulled that out of my butt and it's really called heaven can wait i am just gonna excuse me while i look up robert downey jr's imdb unless someone else can confirm it first robert downey jr i would say that it's circa 1993 I'm just guessing. Chances are, Jennifer. Jack Rogers, Jack Rogers says yes. Jack Rogers? Who's Jack Rogers? A guy on our Oh. Show. Um, oh my gosh, do you guys remember when Robert Downey Jr. was an Alan McBeal? Forgot all about that. Um, oh, chances are. Warren Beatty's the actor in Heaven Can Wait. Oh, but there's another one called Heaven Can Wait, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. Maybe we'll watch Chances Are tonight. Warren Beatty. See? Everyone's saying Warren Beatty, Chances Can Wait. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. What else? What else? Um, what Dreams May Come was the movie. That's a different movie. What Dreams May Come is with Robin Williams, I think. Um, that was an awesome movie, though. Um Oh, somebody asked um, if I will be doing any of the 
Longmire Day panels during the virtual Longmire Days. And um, actually, I'm not going to be doing any of the panels at Longmire Days. Um, I went to Longmire Days last year and I will go next year. I just, right now, I'm in the middle of getting ready for work. Um, and so I, I really don't have the, the time to do it. We're, we're toying with, I think that we're gonna auction off um, something from me. Um, so if you're participating in Longmire Days, um, look out for the auction items because we're trying to come up with something really creative since I cannot participate. But again, I will be there next year um, if it is safe to be there. Um, you know, COVID has really changed so many things. I actually just read this article last night. Um, I don't know if any of you are in Wyoming, but it was an article about Jackson, Wyoming, and how this town is normally like 10,000 people, but in the summer it blows up to like so many people. And that what they're saying is that typically the people that are feeling um, safe enough to travel right now in COVID are, are um, stereotypically people that don't think they need to wear a mask. Um, and so there are a large, um, percentage of people coming into these vacation destinations um, and a lot of the residents and the shop owners and the people that own restaurants and stuff are, are you know, just inundated with people that don't want to respect and wear masks, which is, you know, I, I, you know, on one hand, I understand people sitting here saying it's my right to not wear a mask, but um, your rights stop when you go into a private business. So you're more than welcome to stand out on a street corner and not wear a mask. But if you want to go into somebody's private business and, and they're telling you to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. That's your rights don't allow you to not. No shirt, no shoes, no mask. Yeah. No so um, so I know that that um, someone's saying that Nantucket's having a problem. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting um, how it's it's bringing out the worst in, in so many people, um, which is quite, quite interesting. So um, it's changed a lot of things though. Like we couldn't plan a wedding. We tried to plan a wedding and it got ridiculous, you guys. Have, have any, I need to hear from ladies and gentlemen out there. Have you guys planned a wedding? Have you? You let me know because here's the deal. How much did it cost? It is a scam. It is a scam. <laughs> If you're a wedding planner, I'm sorry. I love you. Um, I wish I had your job. Like my my one of my favorite movies is The Wedding Planner with J Lo because I really want to be a wedding planner. But it's so expensive. Here's the th here's the thing. The wedding doesn't matter. It's getting married that is the thing that I'm most excited about. But you you I get so caught up in or did in all the things because you start to you start to go, oh my God, well, why, sh why we could have that? Let's have that, oh my God. Well, so-and-so wants to bring so-and-so and then all of a sudden you've got 150 people there or 200 people and you're like, wait, it gets so out of control. And here's the crazy thing. Statistically, if you go into a flower shop, supposedly, if you go into any of the vendors and say, hey, I just wanna buy this, um, it's like 30% cheaper then if you go in and say it's for a wedding and then they just like charge you so much more money it's crazy it's crazy um and i just don't i don't know i think that it's irresponsible to spend all that money i know it sounds crazy but see you had a 400 dollars wedding that's amazing you guys people have like hundred thousand dollar weddings $50,000 weddings. I mean, I think that the average is $35,000 to $50,000 on a wedding. Really? That's such a waste of money. It's just, I mean, if you had it, please, no disrespect. I, I, I mean, I absolutely adore weddings. And there is a part of me that wants the biggest wedding possible. And like, I want like, everything you could possibly imagine. I want like six tiers of a cake. I want like 25 bridesmaids. I want three different dresses. I want a 10 karat diamond ring. <laughs> I want all this. There's a part of me that wants that because a society, you, you little girls dream of this. Some little girls do. Some boys dream of this, you know? And um, so you get to the point where you start to plan it 
and it just starts to go like this and then you start I mean I was after two weeks I was so stressed out and so panicked and they were rushing us to pick a location because all the brides that were supposed to get married this year had to push their weddings to next year so now you're fighting against two years of brides for the same amount of locations in three months span and all of a sudden you're like fighting with a bride named Shirley who lives in like another state and you're like well why Shirley get the Saturday I want this <laughs> and you're like I'll pay more and then all of a sudden you start spending all this money and for what it's crazy it's crazy so that's my thing. Sorry, that's my rant. It just, you guys, $125 a head for a buffet? Please. The taco truck is $3. That's crazy. And that's for like four tacos. I, you get four tacos for $3. No. So what did we do? We stopped planning a wedding. <laughs> no, we didn't. We're just changing the plans. <laughs> We're still getting married, everybody. We're still getting married. It just, we made it like this. It's a baby wedding. <laughs> it's like this bit. Someone said, Say do it. a documentary on the wedding. Get networks to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. If I if I was like Khloe Kardashian, I could get them to pay for it. I could get them to pay for multiple weddings. We talked about obviously. doing an episode on, on like cake tasting or something. We did. We kind of, let me know what you guys think of that. Cause like we're still having a wedding. Um, it's just a lot smaller. And um, so we were, are we still having a taco truck? Of course. Um, but so we thought about taking you guys on all this adventure with us potentially. And like, maybe you guys could go like, um, like dress shopping with me and I don't know, cake tasting. And I don't know. Let me know what you think. Those are two things we haven't compromised on. Katie loves cake, and she wants a wedding dress. You guys, I love cake. Do you want to see the cake that I want? I'll show you the cake that I want desperately. Um, just talk amongst yourselves. I want to find it. I'm finding the cake. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. I'm not finding it. I didn't find it. I found it. Okay. What? What? Wait. Look at that. You guys, those flowers are edible. What? That's insanity. That is just insanity. Um, yeah, that is a cake. So we didn't compromise on cake because cake is my favorite food. Um, so we're having cake. <laughs> half the budget <laughs> it's half our budget now the cake is half our budget i'm gonna freeze not only just the top of it like but i'm gonna freeze the whole thing and just have like bites of the cake <laughs> like, and then our marriage ends when you finish the last bite just me sitting in a bathtub with a bottle of champagne and a leftover cake crying after year seven <laughs> um yeah, so that's that. That's the wedding thing that we sort of like went like, what? So, um, um, if someone needs, I'll need a chest freezer. Yeah, thirty thousand dollars for a cake. <laughs> it's not far. Off. It's not that bad. I promise. Um, <laughs> um, what did someone say? Um, books, books you recently read and oh highly my gosh. rate. Um. So I've actually been listening. One of my favorite things to do actually during quarantine has been to go for long walks. And so I've been listening to books on tape, um, which I adore. Um, so one of the books that um, I've been reading is a Pima Chodron book. Uh, P-E-M-A Chodron is C-H-O-D-R-O-N, wow. if you're looking, Pima Chodron, um, called uh, Comfortable with Uncertainty. Um, and so Pima is actually taught me all about, I'm going to talk about meditation for just a tiny bit, um, taught me about a certain type of meditation, not personally, I've never met her, it would be an honor to, but, um, um, but she taught me about a meditation style called uh, Tonglen. Um, and Tonglen is T O N G Tong L E N. So Tonglen. And what it is is that in it, just so people can Google I know, it. I just love that you're going full in on the spelling. I love it. I am. When I talk about things that people might want to Google, because I'm probably not going to explain it right. But um, so uh, Pima 
um, talks about Tonglen. And what Tonglen is, is a meditation style of, um, I actually just tweeted the link to somebody the other day. So if you look to my light, my responses to people on Twitter, you'll see um, where I discuss it. But um, it's the act of in a meditation actually taking in the pain of the world and then um, um, sending out um, a counter to the negative. Um, and so what it did to me, what Tonglen did to me, um, was it actually um, it fills you with a sense of humility um, and um, compassion um, and understanding for things that people of the world are going through um, because you're taking it on um, and then you're putting something positive out to them and to the world. So um, I love Pima Chodron. I think that she's amazing. Um, and then uh, the other book that I've been listening to, um, actually, I just finished it today. I'm going to look at my Audible. Um, it's Untamed by uh, Glennon Doyle. So um, Glennon's amazing. This is what it looks like. And the book cover looks like that too. You've probably seen like a lot of actresses talking about it it's like self-helpy and stuff um but she's awesome she like she's got so much insight into um just like how she's lived her life and the decisions that she's made and um it's a really cool book um i would highly suggest it if you if you like self-help books or if you like um sort of like um autobiographies it's a really cool it's a really cool listen um um, somebody asked me if I believe in aliens. Don't you? Do you believe in aliens? Yeah. I do too. I think when you say you believe in aliens, it just makes a visualization people think is weird, but there's got to be life. What do you somewhere. picture when you picture an alien? Oh, I'm picturing like single cells and like small life forms. Yeah. That I think it's more practical. Really? Yeah. I picture like all the aliens from Men in Black. <laughs> and my the pug that's what I she's asleep <laughs> but that's what I picture I picture like that guy like that little worm smoking a cigar and like <laughs> men in black that's what I picture but I do I think that you know to um, quote one of my favorite movies Contact with Jodie Foster um, it would be uh, sure it would be it would it would be a hell of a waste of space if we were alone wouldn't it so um, I think that there has to be um, intelligent life out there um, because it's just, it's too big for it to not. It just, yeah, it's just too big. It's just literally so big. How could there not be? Um, um, what else? Hi guys, I'm reading questions right now. <laughs> um, here's one. Um, how did somebody as well addressed as you stand Hollywood meat grinder? I love that the Hollywood meat grinder. I've never heard that before. Like just like, just like some like, I sort of figure, I picture like, I picture, <laughs> what's her name from Misery? <laughs> um, I picture, um, what's the actress's oh. name from Misery? Oh, she's great. Oh my God, why am I not remembering it? I think it went right now. I don't know. With James Caan, you guys. Somebody give us the name. Why am I not thinking of... From Misery. She's amazing. Kathy Bates. There you go. Jesus. Okay. So I'm thinking of like Kathy Bates, <laughs> like meat grindering up actors, like in some really awful way, like just cutting off ankles, <laughs> like meat grinding up actors. Um, sorry. The question was, how did I stay so normal? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't, you guys. She's not normal. You guys, I'm crazy. Um, no, I'm not normal. Um, I think one of the main things that has worked for for me um, throughout the years is that my family. I'm I'm cl I'm incredibly close with my family, and my family doesn't think I'm special at all. <laughs> So, they, in fact, my I do believe my brother was the one that told me I was an overpaid compulsive liar. So, it is now the way that I describe myself um, constantly um, because it's. I think that the people that you surround yourself with keep you grounded in in any in any profession in any walk of life. 
you know, um, whether you're successful or not, the people around you are going to hold you accountable for the the decisions and the actions that you make. And, you know, um, I think that I've been lucky enough to be able to surround myself with um, people that are very honest and open and, and um, um, I've been taught to take criticism. My dad thinks that criticism is how you raise strong individuals. So that's been fun. <laughs> what did he say to me the other day? Oh, Katie, toughen up. Yeah, you just got soft skin or something. Oh, he told me I have soft skin. <laughs> um, thanks, Dad. Thanks. Um, but I think that um, I think that's the main thing. And I also think that I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old and um, I've experienced a lot of success and a lot of failure um, and I've considered I've experienced a lot of heartache um, you know I I've been attached to movies that were supposed to happen and got fired five days before and replaced with Kate Bosworth like it just it happens you know um, it just someone decided that she sold foreign better than I did and and they're probably right she does um, but it, it sucks it hurts so I, I think that y y when you have moments like that um, they make you stronger um, and then they also m force you to realize that what you do isn't who you are um, and you have to um, people say that all the time like you know um, would you, what do you say to other actors? What do you say to people wanting to get into this industry? And I constantly say to people, go for it. Like, who am I to tell you not to go after your dreams? I think that one of the most beautiful things that my parents ever allowed me to do was to go after my dream. And they raised me to believe that anything was possible. That is amazing. That is such a gift to give your kids. Um, what I tell people now, the main thing to do though is to, for the love of God, please don't get your validation from this business. Um, you know, please don't don't put who you you are and your self worth on whether or not people like you, because people are gonna hate you. People are gonna. You, I'm just not a lot of people's cup of tea. Like some, I, I, it's fine. Um, I I think I, I, you know, people tell me that I'm. Like, what don't, did that don't, lady don't, say don't the other day? Me. I'm not going to tell you those. She told me that I was loud and obnoxious and washed up and mm -hmm. a has-been and... All she right. Got, she got the loud and obnoxious. <laughs> I'm not loud and obnoxious in, in public, just at <laughs> home. <laughs> um, um, so, so that's the thing. I think that you cannot get any of your self-worth from the things that you accomplish in life you have to get your self-worth from the people that you love and 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 the things that you do in your life and and the people that you help and and um the lessons that you're willing to learn and your humility and those are those are what we should judge our successes by not if you booked a role or if you got the job or if you know you're, you know, if you've never been dumped or, you know, people put so much importance on, on, you know, never having been scathed. Like they, they sort of like think that success is like, you know, this, and it's not like it's, it's, you know, success is completely internal, yeah. something like that. Well, it's all over the place. Make it sound like it's easy, but like we talked about earlier, it's not always easy to keep that mentality. No, I get asked a lot, actually, um, I get asked a lot how I stay so happy, and um, people tell me a lot that that I'm so, like, bubbly and happy and, and positive all the time, and I think that one of the things that um, we need to realize is that I'm not happy all the time. Um, I'm, I'm not bubbly all the time I'm I cry a lot I get depressed um, I have days of self-loathing like I have so many um, of those bad days but I think I think that we've gotten so used to in society especially now with COVID there are so many people that are in this self-help space and they're just constantly bombarding you with these positive messages like 
you know, like choose happiness and, you know, get back up and, you know, like don't let the fear stop you. <laughs> like all of these, these things where, you know, um, like love yourself through the pain, <laughs> like, all of these things. And I think that we need to remember that if you don't sit in your pain sometimes, and if you don't allow yourself to experience those bad days, then all you're doing is brushing it under the rug and eventually it's gonna come back out and it's gonna hurt a lot more in the future. Um, and so I think that that's really important that you know we all acknowledge that we have bad days. Oh, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about, how great it is. I don't know if you guys saw this on my Instagram, I am so excited that there is now a national three-digit number for the suicide prevention hotline. That is, it, it's yeah, there is a number. It's not coming out until 2022, July. Um, I would imagine there's a lot of changeover that needs to happen. But it's such an amazing thing that there is now a three-digit number in 2022 so people don't have to remember a 1-800 number people don't have to remember 10 digits or nine digits whatever it is when they're in pain when they need help it's so important you know we have that number we have 911 to help us when we need help um and i think that so many times people who are having um thoughts of suicide and contemplating taking their life by suicide need help and it's so important that we have that three digit number. So I am so excited in 2022 that we're gonna have that uh, number. I'm really excited. And um, um, and there's also a, a national registry, and I, or uh, international um, in my um, Instagram, or I'll put it back up there. But I, I just hope that, that other countries uh, follow suit and come up with shorter numbers for people. So, um, I'm really excited about that, though. <laughs> um, All right. Questions. Questions. Now I'm just rambling. Sorry, guys. Um, oh, I have a question for you guys. Here, let's keep it real. Have you guys ever had melasma? I'm going to need to see some ladies or some guys. I know that people get it, women get it when they're pregnant. Um, so, melasma... It's when you get, I, I put some makeup on it, but you can sort of see it. The skin right here, and it's not hair, so it's not like, my hair's blonde. Um, my eyebrows I have to color in because they're so blonde. But um, it, your skin gets darker, like around your lip, and it's like hormonal changes. No, I'm not pregnant. Um, <laughs> someone's like, are you pregnant? Um, no, I'm not pregnant. I actually can't get pregnant. It's not one of the things that I've talked about. Um, but so no, I'm not pregnant. Um, but I have melasma, so obviously um, I'm having that. What do I do? Give me some tips. Reach out to me and tell me what I need to do. I think I need to do like a laser or something. Um, yeah. So this person just said his wife got it really bad, um, or I'm assuming it's a, a gentleman. But uh, my wife got it. Um, really bad with our daughter but not our boys isn't that interesting i wonder if there's a hormonal difference between girls and boys obviously there has to be um yeah that's so crazy um it said how do you not have more subscribers great question Ed. great question <laughs> Um, <laughs> tell all your friends. I don't know. I, you know, I think what happened, like, we really tried um, when we um, when we started out, we really wanted to change the, the YouTube model for us. And we were going to do seasons. And we were going to do 10 episodes a season and then do another season. And it just didn't work. You know, YouTube has an algorithm, and we tried to fight it and it didn't work. It won. So, it won. YouTube won. Um, so what happened was we were putting out tons of content and then we disappeared for five months. And then we started putting out more content and... Didn't like it. It didn't like it. And so it stopped like pushing our stuff. So, um, and then also, you know, I'm not... I'm, I'm not a superstar. I'm not, you know, I've never been in a Marvel movie. Not to name any names. Um, so I don't have YouTube, um, nor do I have a massive publicity team, like, pushing out the fact that I'm on YouTube. So we're just doing this by ourselves. Um, I think that's what people really don't realize. It's just 
It's just you, you and I. And me and Peter. And Peter. We do have an editor um, when we when we need him and, and when you're too busy and who's who's no offense, but he's an editor. Yeah. Yeah. Robin yeah. taught himself how to edit you guys. It's pretty amazing. Robin like he's an amazing he Robin can do anything. Oh, but Peter's Peter's my better. But Peter Peter's an editor and he helped us. Um and Peter helped us do the first season and everything. So You can see him on uh, Mikey's channel. <gasps> um someone said I worry too much. No I don't. <laughs> um, um, someone just said that reaction vid seems to be where it's at on YouTube. I know, but I'm so trying not to do like that. I know that sounds crazy, but like I know that I could probably like do something that would, you know, get us out there more. Like I could just wear a bikini all the time or I could like what else could I do I could get drunk on camera constantly which we did once which was really fun um I don't know like I could do I could what's really big I got video games I could play video games and you guys could watch me play them like you know it's like things like that but at the end of the day I wanted to um I wanted to do things that interested me um, because then I think what would happen is that my enthusiasm would, would, I don't know, make you guys interested as well, maybe? Um, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, next question. Okay. Um, would you recommend Diva Cups for very active ladies? You guys. I wanted to call you out. Robin, stop calling me out. I have never tried the Diva Cup. I own it. I've never tried it. You gotta boil it first. It's just a lot. It is a lot. I, I don't have to boil tampons. Yeah. Sorry guys, we're talking about periods again. What what would a video be if I didn't talk about my period? Um, um, it's gonna be really strange when I go through menopause someday and I don't have it anymore and people are gonna be like, I miss her period tops. No, and I need to try the gosh darn diva cup. All right, guys, I will do it. My period's like five days away. I brought it with me to Canada. So it's here, the intent is there. I bought it and I brought it with me. I've only owned it for three years. We're gonna try. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. All right. Are there workout videos coming back? I don't know. Are they? I don't know. I mean, in some form, it, YouTube's hard, guys. YouTube's a hard place. Instagram might be where they live. Yeah. It's Robin says that Instagram may be where the the workout videos live. Um. So I don't know. I want to do more workout videos. So I'll try. I'll try. Um, got someone just said, what is a diva cup? A diva cup is like a Dixie cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's made out of silicone and you just put it in, you put it inside of you and it's like a little cup. And then when you have your period, the cup catches it. And then you pull said cup out, wash it. Then you take your clean cup and you put it back inside. And then it catches more. <laughs> that is the Diva Cup. I'm pretty sure that could have been a commercial for Diva Cup. Just hit me up, guys. Hit me up. We could use a, subscribe, a sponsor for our videos. That would be nice. <laughs> and someone just said, ugh, ew. I know. I know. But I care about the environment, so I'm really leaning into this that like I really want to do this it's going to happen it's going to happen Jennifer W says you don't need to boil it just clean it you don't need to boil it Jen? water and peroxide oh peroxide I don't know if you can even buy peroxide right now is peroxide back on the shelves like wasn't peroxide one of the things that was like selling out no that was alcohol not peroxide um, it does sound like a lot of work, but it's so much better for the environment, you guys. Like, think about it. Think about how many women in the world are menstruating. Sorry. 
Um, now if we could all just cycle together, we'd take over the world! <laughs> <laughs> and we blew your headphones off. And we'd call our island the Crimson Tide! <laughs> it's like a football, it's a college football team. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, um, so think about it, right? So all of those women are menstruating for five days every, for 12 times a year. Now think about all of that waste going into the oceans and into landfills and like there just has to be something different. So I already use the reusable pads, which I highly suggest. You can get them on Amazon. They're super cheap. I love them. Um, they're amazing. Um, but yeah, so um, Diva Cup. It's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> um, so, Oh, someone said that they lost 10 pounds doing my videos with running, too, so I love them. Instagram is great, too. Nadira. Nadira, that's amazing. Nadira, you didn't need to lose any weight. You're absolutely gorgeous. But good for you. But if, okay, if that's what you wanted to do, congratulations. But you look absolutely beautiful either way. Um, um, it's been really challenging sort of trying to shoot these videos because, like, my – so I got hurt. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I um, – so I have a Baker cyst on the back of my knee. Um, it's not cool. It sucks. Um, it's so strange because I can run and I can walk and I can do anything. I just can't bend my knee. So um, – it really sucks. It's very limiting. I have a hard time with squats. Um, I can't really like do much of anything, which is really frustrating. Um, and so um, I've just been trying to like not think of workouts. And um, but here's the crazy cool thing. There's what did I hear? I heard this quote today. I think it was Joe Dispenza. Is that his name? Joe Dispenza. Dispenza said originally at one point. All the information in the world you need is on the internet. <laughs> and it's free, um, which is great. What I mean by that is that there are so many amazing workout plans um, on so many different platforms um, that it's, it's really great. And that's sort of what I've been doing is looking at other people's workout plans. Um, you know, I, um, um, I follow um, Candace Cameron Bray who's amazing. I love her. I've loved her since I was a little kid. And um, she does the Kira Stoke method. Um, and she and Kira work out together a lot on Instagram every Monday. Here I am like doing, like <laughs> telling them to go work out with Candace. But it's great. Um, Candace is great. And the workouts that she's doing are great. And they're right there as well. So um, I just gave all my people to Candace. She doesn't, she doesn't need any help. She's doing fine by herself. Um, all right. Um, 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 um. <laughs> Someone, Ed just said you should make a clothing line like every celebrity ever. Something with jeans, perhaps. The first scene of you in Longmire was fire. <laughs> so someone's um, asking what type, what brand of jeans you wore in Longmire. Oh, um, AG was the brand. I don't really know. Um, AG, I think. Um, I don't really, I, I don't know anything other than that. Um, but they were really tight. And they would get tighter every year. Not because I was like, you know, gaining weight, but because like we just kept making them smaller and smaller and smaller. And I don't know why. <laughs> it was like, did you guys ever hear this story? This is one of the best stories ever. So um, we heard that there was a woman that called a an older lady that called a share station in Wyoming, in Buffalo, Wyoming, and because she couldn't find Absaroka to call and complain. So she called Buffalo because she, she assumed that it was close enough um, because she wanted to complain about a deputy. And that's this female deputy and that she was wearing very inappropriate clothing and that um, it should never be allowed and that, uh, and they were like, okay, all right, what's her name? And they said, Vic. And they go, I'm sorry, are you talking about Longmire? Like, that's not, 
it's not it's not a documentary and because it was on a and e i think she thought it was a documentary because they did so many documentary shows is that not the funniest thing you've ever heard like bless her like bless her that was so funny and um she was very adamant that vic should button up her shirts more and so i unbuttoned a button <laughs> after that you guys i had t-shirts underneath obviously vic didn't ever just wear she always had a tank top on or something um isn't that hysterical that was one of the funniest things that i ever heard and i loved it so much um it made me laugh my butt off so then i think i made my pants tighter i think my pants got tighter and my shirt got lower and it was fun <laughs> um what else Oh, um, speaking of Longmire, so this is a spoiler. If you guys haven't watched Longmire, maybe you should mute it for a second. Okay, um, someone has said, uh, speaking of Longmire, how difficult was it to do the baby episode where Vic um, lost her baby? It was really hard. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think anytime as an actor, when you are dealing with something that so many women and men have experienced and um it is absolutely devastating um i think that you want to make sure that you do it justice you want to make sure that you convey it accurately because um that it's such a personal experience for so many people and so um I have my own experiences with infertility, and so I definitely um, know what it feels like to not be able to have children, um, but I've never ex had, in that moment, I had never experienced a loss of a child. So um, I think in that moment, what I did was I, I focused desperately on what it meant to Vic and what that loss meant to her and her guilt and um and so it was really really hard um however um and i have to thank um zetna fuentes is was the director of that episode phenomenal uh female director strong woman amazing um and um she pushed me to go to a place that I wasn't necessarily comfortable with. You know, I, I did I did the first scene and we, we did the first take and, and I was just sobbing the entire time. Not sobbing, but I was crying the entire time. And, and she came over and she said, okay. And, and um, she said, how do you think that was? And I was like, no, yeah, okay. And she goes, well, now that you've got that out of your system, <laughs> I would love to to have you try it this way and she actually gave me the advice of hold it in as long as I could and it was beautiful advice because um, it made me feel what Vic felt to, to it made me feel her guilt and it made me feel her shame and it made me feel all of the things that she was going through because I was desperately trying not to cry and then at the end I just lost it um, and that was ultimately the take that you saw. Um, so that entire uh, scene is an episode is is very much um, uh, um, thanks to uh, Zetna Fuentes, who's an amazing director. So, yeah, um, you can unmute. Let me tell people unmute. <laughs> okay. Hi. <laughs> um, 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 couple more. Couple more, and then we shall, we shall go. Um, um, let's see. Let's make them good ones. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> um. Uh, someone just said. Um, someone just said that they watched an episode one time where Starbuck was drunk and that they were drunk too, and it, too, and it was pretty great. It must have felt like you were being accurately presented or portrayed. Um, <clears throat> um, 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 someone says, "I think you should stay in Canada." 
Now, do you think I should stay in Canada because you think that I should stay in Canada? Or do you think I should stay in Canada because you're like American and you don't want me to come back? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's two sides of that. A dark question. <laughs> um, it's a cannibalism question. Oh, I lost it. Oh, no. Need your opinion on essay. Cannibalism to survive, guilty or not guilty? <laughs> Yes. Really taking it to the donor party, aren't we? Wow. I would eat someone. Would you? Uh, yeah, probably. The question though. I is, mean, I would eat you. Would you. Should you be guilty of of that as a crime? I think that's the question. Should you be guilty of that as a crime if you did eat somebody to just purely out of survival? If it was survival and you didn't murder them. Ooh. If you didn't murder them. I think that it's like you're not guilty. If you murdered them to eat them, yeah, you yeah, you're guilty of murder. Fuck you, you're but guilty of guilty, murder. You should be guilty of murder. You're not guilty of murder, not cannibalism. Yeah, absolutely. I would eat you. I wouldn't well, eat our yeah. children, even if they passed away. I wouldn't be able to do that for survival. I would just die right next to them. But I would eat you. I would eat the shit out of you. What about the dogs? I wouldn't eat the dogs. What? You, would, you wouldn't, wouldn't eat the dogs? Would you eat me? I would eat you. Willingly. Over the dog. A hundred percent. And I would, I, get. I would cry so hard the entire time I did it. Wedding's off. <laughs> I would eat you so hard. Oh my God, that sounds, that sounds really bad. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um... No, I think that it's totally fine. I think that if it's a survival thing and that you, you're you already dead, especially if our children were alive, Jesus, I'd eat you even faster <laughs> to, to be strong and take care of those children. <laughs> that sounds bad. It sounded awful. It sounded, you can't say that you want to eat someone so hard. Vargas is coming over because he's, he's scared I'm going to eat him. And I would never eat you. I promise. I would never eat you. Thank you. Okay. Um, praying mantis style. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, All right, one more? One more. Here we go. Well, oh, here's a good one. This is an easy one. When do you start filming again? End of August. So soon. So soon. We find out today if we got approved by the union. My union. Um, anyway. The new union that's never done anything up yet. Um, the truth comes out yet. Yeah. Robin, my man. Not even before the dogs, harsh. Oh, yeah. All the guys feel really bad for you. <laughs> they do. Who would die first? I think I would die first because I'm a little or if it was like cold or something, I think I would die first. Because mm -hmm. you've got more. No, I think I'd die first because I need more calories oh, that's and true. energy to survive. And you have less body fat than I do. Maybe. Yeah. Aw. Aw. So I would eat so you. So you would eat me. All right. There you go, guys. There you go. All right. <laughs> uh, next Q&A, when are we thinking? Um, um, someone just said, last question. This is the last one. Um, someone asked me about doing a Tough Mudder. I don't know because Tough Mudder just got purchased by Spartan, didn't they? I don't know what the status of Tough Mudder is right now. What's happening it, with Tough Mudder? Little, seems like it's a little in the. In didn't the air. they go bankrupt? And then they tried to. We've always been a bigger fan of the Spartan races, largely because they're more sport oriented and less spectacle. I think mm. is that accurate to say that? Yeah, like the the Tough Mudders to me, it always seemed like. Um, I don't know. The Spartan, to me, always seemed like it was taken a little bit more seriously from an athletic perspective of like a competition thing. Whereas the Tough Mudder always seemed like something, and maybe this is just a judgment because when Tough Mudder came out, like they were really just like um, pushing it as like, hey, come out, wear a tutu, have fun. <laughs> um, and so I think that I have this perception of what the Tough Mudder is because they like, don't they like electrocute you? And like, they do like weird stuff where like, I don't, I don't want to be electrocuted at all. Um, I mean, I would do a race in a tutu because that sounds like a hell of a good time. Um, um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with Tough Mudder. So um, I would do one. I just don't know what's happening with it. I don't know if they're actually in business anymore. 
So we'll see. Right. Someone just said, <laughs> I'm with Katie on this one. Husband, yes. Kids and dogs, no. <laughs> Cold. It's a lady thing. Uh, next Q&A, maybe a couple weeks. A couple try weeks. Try and do another video for next next week. Maybe we could have a special guest on. Michael Truco may be out of quarantine by then. Ooh. No promises, though. No promises. We'll maybe try and do a guest or something. So it's not just me sitting here laughing the whole time. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, um, guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, these Q and A's, um, I really enjoy them. It's been giving me something to look forward to. If you have any ideas for the motorcycle show for Trisha and I, put them down there. Um, I'm pointing down there as if that's where the comments are. Is that where the comments are? Yeah. They're down there. Um, and um, let me know about that. I'll keep you guys posted. Um, I'm really also. What do you guys want to see from me while? we're filming um, because it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna do Q and A's, um, I think with some cast members on weekends, which would be really cool. But so we're, we're just coming up with some new episodes and, and we're toying with some really fun stuff. So I'm really excited. Um, but again, let me know what you wanna see because um, we made this channel for you guys. So, all right, bye, thank you.